Smart fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at US voting data, we'll be making a map in QGIS 3, and we are going to be using a method called value by alpha. I'm sure you have many questions. What is value by alpha? How do I make a map as awesome as this? Who's going to win the US election? By the end of this tutorial, you'll have the answer to 66% of those questions. So let's dive in. Today's tutorial is taken from the book QGIS Map Design, which is excellent. And it was written by Anita Grazer and Gretchen Peterson. You can find them here and here on Twitter. This is not a paid promotion, it's just a very good book. So let's start using it. Here we are in QGIS 3.10, and to begin with, we need some data. Now, the nice thing about QGIS map design is that data is provided for you, and there is also, in each exercise, a handy little icon which tells you how long an exercise should take. So, let's add in our data. So, I've got some election data for Minnesota from the 2012 election, and also populated places, these points. We're going to use those for labeling later on. I'll just switch those off for now. And with our Minnesota election data, this is split into county level. So, let's just open up our attribute table and see what we're dealing with. All right, we have got the county name, FITS codes, and then we should also have who won or how many votes each candidate got. So we've got Barack Obama and we've got Mitt Romney and we've got other candidates in there as well. And I think we also have the total result, which is how many people actually voted in that county. First step towards creating our value by alpha map is to create a simple choropleth map. And I'm gonna do that using rule-based symbology. So I'll double click on our election data Currently, we've got a single symbol as our method, and I'm going to change that to rule-based. We have one rule in there, style everything the same, and we have no filter. Now, I'd like to change that. I'm going to add a filter to this. So, I'll double-click it. I'm going to give it the label of Obama, and then I'm going to click on the expression button to create a filter. And the expression I would like here, I want this one to be styled if Obama had more votes than Mitt Romney. So I'll go into fields and values and I'm going to choose this field and say greater than, oh, where's Mitt? There he is. Greater than Mitt Romney. Okay, that. And for our styling, I'm going to choose blue because Obama was standing for the Democrat Party. I'll okay that and I'll apply it. Now we should see in the background, you can see all the counties where Obama got more of the vote than Mitt Romney did. All right, let's add a, another one. For this one, I'm gonna call it, yes, you guessed it, Romney. And we're gonna have this one a Republican red, if there is such a color. Okay, and then we need to set a filter for this as well. So I'll just go into my expression builder again. One of the neat things about Expression Builder is that you can go down to your recent expressions. Here I've got Barack has more votes than Mitt, and I am just going to change that symbol to that way around, and OK that. OK, and let's apply that, and then we get some red, red counties as well. Notice that we've got a few holes in there. That's probably where they equaled, so I'm going to add another one in. That color looks absolutely fine, and we'll call this one a tie. So for that filter, again, I'll go down to recent, double click that, and I'm just gonna pop an equal sign in there. Okay, apply that, and there's our choropleth map. That was easy. Now our choropleth map is useful. It shows us which counties voted which way, but could we add something else to this? Probably could. If we zoom in, now I've changed the symbology a little bit here just to make life easier. We can see that all these counties voted for Obama and here's a particularly large county which looks like it's in the middle of a metropolitan area. And let's just turn on Bing Earth. Oh, look at that. It looks like it's 
mainly an airport. There are not many people living in this area, I would guess. If you look at that one to the north, that looks like it holds a lot more voters. So let's just pull up our information here and click on this. We have a total number of voters of 84 and yet a huge land area. If we look just to the north, we have got 1,715 people in a very small area. So what it might be useful to do in order to make this a bit more representative is to add more weight to those counties that have a very high voter density. And that's what we're going to use value by alpha for. I've set my symbology back to roughly where it was and I need to get into my rules again. So here's our rule based symbology. I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to call this one alpha. Now if you're wondering what the alpha signifies, that is the alpha channel of colour and it controls opacity. So I'm just going to make this one black, I'm going to give it no filter and it's going to sit on the bottom. Now although the alpha rule is sitting on the bottom, I would actually like it to draw on top of the other layers. We're going to use this as kind of a see-through or semi-see-through layer to go over the top of our voting data. So I'm going to use symbol levels. And in here we can see that every level that we've got is set to zero. And if I change my alpha to one and OK that, when I hit apply, everything goes black. Now that is not what we want. We need to change the opacity of that layer according to a value. So if I double click on this and get into the simple fill, for our fill color, I'm going to go into the data defined override and I'm going to hit edit for our expression. And in our expression, I am going to use something called set color part. And here we can see it's requesting a color, a component, and it wants a value as well. The other way you can find this is to go up to set color part here. And if you highlight that, we've got some documentation about exactly how this works. So there's quite a few cool effects that you can get out of this. Now for our set color part, I'm going to set the color to black. We can use just the name of a color if it's a simple color like black, red, blue, whatever. The component of that color, which channel would we like to change? We can change the alpha channel, the red, the green, the blue. I'm going to go for alpha. And the value that we'd like to set, I'm going to put this value at 100. And you can see here that we have got um, an expected output and output preview. So I'll just OK that and OK that. And if I hit apply, there we are. You can see that the alpha channel has been set to 100. Now the values for alpha go from zero up to 255 and I've set it to 100. So it's semi-transparent. Now semi-transparency across the board just makes our map look pretty dull and boring. And that is not what we'd like to do. So I'm going to change that value. Uh, let's just go in here and go back to edit. Again, all right, so instead of 255, we are going to use something else, and this one is called Scale Linear. And I'll just pull it up here so that you can see the dots on the right hand side. And I suggest that you do this yourself and take some time to read through them. So, Scale Linear it requires a value, it needs a domain minimum, a domain maximum, a range min, and a range max. So, you can see what these variables mean and we are going to create our own. And what we would like to do with this is to create a voter density. To calculate that voter density, I am going to go to Fields and Values. I'm going to put in the total number of voters, and I'm going to divide that by the area of the county, and I'll divide that by 10 million. Okay, and so our lowest value for voter density is going to be zero, and anything above 250, we want to shine through. If the voter density is zero, we want to set our alpha channel to full opacity, so no transparency at all. 
and if we have a value of voter density above 250 we want no covering from our alpha layer at all okay so let's do that and you can see that our expression is working we've got the output preview there okay that and okay that and apply and in the background there we are our map is beginning to take shape now there are a couple of finishing touches that we could put to the map and that involves labeling but i am not going to steal the thunder of this wonderful book there is a whole section on labeling in qgis map design and as ever i'll be providing links to be able to purchase the book in the description below the video or if you're watching this on the website you can see the links in the text Big thanks to Anita and Gretchen for putting this book together and to Locate Press for publishing it. Thanks very much for all your support on the channel. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and happy mapping.